Hey, welcome back to my channel. Um, I wanted to do a quick video on preparing your room for the age range zero to five, which is what I signed up for. Um, I was originally set out to post once a month and I missed June. So it's now July, 2021. In the May video, I went over all the kind of timeline of everything and what it took to get licensed in that process as far as the timeline of due dates and um, requirements, that kind of thing. But um, some things have changed recently in my own journey, um, and I may be taking on an older child in a few weeks, and so this room is probably going to have to be really readjusted. So I didn't want to miss an opportunity to show you the work that I put into setting it up for a young child, um, which again, I did have one placement in that age range. Um, so she did get to utilize this room. So it's not for waste for sure. Um, and that's the beauty of it is it can be adjusted for the child's likes, dislikes, age, that kind of thing. But this is kind of a combination of things I've prepared ahead of time. And then also things that have been added since I had that first foster placement. Um, and I needed to adjust and things I found helpful. So, um, first of all, you don't need a very big room. As you can tell, my, um, child's room is not huge um that's just kind of a quick glance overview but just wanted to hit a few high points of things that I really felt were important so first um I had an old tv that I used to have in my room as a child that was like one of the big box tvs very heavy um and I had the advice of my aunt actually um that the child might you know pull that down on them and get hurt I invested in a smaller TV. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it here. Um, and it is a smart TV. It's a Roku. Um, and I would highly recommend getting a smart TV for your child's room simply because um, I found it very beneficial at night um, to be able to put on like relaxing music or lullabies because um, it can connect to the internet and you can access that stuff through YouTube. Um, also, it provided like a natural nightlight as it was on and things were streaming until she fell asleep. Also, the thing I really like about the Roku, which I can show you on the remote here, is that it has a built-in sleep timer. I don't know if you can see that thing that looks kind of like a, a moon there. Um, and you can set it to automatically go off within a certain time frame, whether it be... 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. I typically left mine on for a minimum of two hours, sometimes four, if she was having a hard time sleeping, um, just to give her some sense of not being alone and some comfort in the middle of the night. So I highly suggest that you invest in a smart TV for your child's room if you don't have one already. And the smallest size available is what I got. Um, and it's very lightweight. So even if they would topple this over onto themselves, it's going to be pose a lot less danger than a full size box TV. Um, I just have it on a cheap put together stand that I ordered offline. Pretty sure I got it off Amazon. Um, very easy to assemble. Um, as you can see, still have some of her artwork and things up. Um, the other thing is I have a lamp that's hooked to the light switch so that there's no big overhead light to distract at night and I can easily turn it on and off with the light switch. That w I thought was very helpful during my process with a young one. Um, and then just some generalized toys that I collected during the process. As you can see, um, I bought this cube storage thing, um, again, online um, from Amazon, and it's been very helpful as far as storage. Um, then I bought this play-size kitchen, actually for the current foster placement that I had around Christmas time for her to use. Um, and then I also invested in a small size child child's table. You can see here with the, it has two little seats. And this is very helpful for if they're not old enough or attention span's not long enough to really sit at the dinner table with you. Then, you know, she had time and space in here that she could eat and um on that note one helpful thing too i invested in was this awesome mat for the floor um let's see if i can get a better view of it here so it's um 
each little piece disconnects and it just snaps together and it's almost like a foam mat but um, you can set the child's table on here so that if you have food or drink spills um, very easy to clean up if you have carpet and as the base in your floor um, I was not in a position to put in new flooring so this is a lifesaver for carpet if a kid is eaten and is messy for spills and drops and that kind of thing um, and I think I gave you a glimpse of the bed last time but this is a set up as a toddler bed um, you can kind of see I have some stuffed animals and blankets and things in it this is just a baby rail I got from Target um, just for a toddler bed just for some extra security um, but I will say the wonderful thing about this and I suggest if you're gonna do the zero to five simply because you know that's a wide range of need as far as sleep space um, this is a convertible bed so I actually had it at one point set up as a crib and um, it converts to this toddler bed but then also comes with the ability to convert to a full-size bed for an older child as well so instead of investing in a crib a toddler bed and a normal size bed would highly recommend the convertible in these situations um, and then um, one thing I found very helpful so um, to kind of help you abide by some of the rules and regs is that if you're not allowed to share a sleep space with a child so if the child has a very hard time sleeping on their own um, you can't you know crawl in bed with them I mean you can sit in the floor by their bedside until they fall asleep but I just as a preparation in case I had one that was just up all night long in order not to have to cross that boundary or be tempted by that I also made sure in my child's room I had a comfortable sleep space for me in case I needed to stay all night in the room and that is this lovely chase couch here I'm trying to get it settled here where I can show you a good view but um, it's a, a full-size chase here um, and I have extra pillows and blankets on it um, this also serves as a great kind of mediator between having a placement and not having a placement if you want to have guests over this is a very comfortable space for a guest to be able to sleep in this room if you don't have a child um, because this was set up as my spare bedroom for when I had family over and when it's converted to a child's room obviously I lost that um, capacity to host others so and now granted if you had a current placement you wouldn't want to just stick your random family members in the room with them probably um, unless they're super comfortable with it and those you know kind of boundaries and things have been discussed but um, this is just a very convenient sleep space for like I said not only myself if the child has a hard time sleeping at night on their own but also um, if I have don't have a current placement and want to have a friend or family member over then they can sleep in the kiddos room <laughs> and have space to themselves to sleep so that would be a very highly recommended addition to a room is that you find a comfortable rest spot for yourself in case you end up being in the room with them all night um, the next big thing was the closet um, so you can just kind of see here I stocked up on a random assortment and sizes of diapers and even in the corner here I have some overnight diapers um, up there that were sizes four and five for maybe an older um, you know four or five year old that had accidents at nights and then just some extra stashed pull-ups and even a, like a bumbo for a small child I mean poppy for a small child um, and then just a variety of clothes that I collected in different sizes and age ranges um, this right here um, these are online you can buy them um, it's a mattress pad protector for the pack and play and I do have a, a pack and play stashed in here as well I'm not sure if you can see it real well in this video um, but one thing with that is these you can fit very well over a pack and play base so that as you have different child and you know different bodily fluids might be on it it's easy to wash instead of having to try to get it out of the base of the pack and play now I will say one disclaimer on the pack and play I was under the impression that that could serve as a sleep space for a very young child and that's 
at least in my area, not true. Um, that cannot be a permanent sleep space for your child. It can be a nap space, a supervised nap space, or like, you know, if you go on vacation, that kind of thing. But it cannot be their permanent sleep, sleep space in your home. Anyway, and I just have extra crib sheets and things hanging here as well. Um, also, I bought some of the just um, generic, you can find them anywhere. Um, sorry, I'm trying to make, see if I can get a good view of it. The little plastic containers that look like drawers um, just for extra storage, extra diapers. And then, of course, just some extra kid toys over here. Just a little stash of stuff, doll houses, play stroller. Um, I'm sorry, the view is probably not the best. I'm having to turn it around where I can't see the screen. So, sorry if that all looked completely blurry. But also, this is part of her daycare requirements. They had to have their own um, sleep mat and blankets in a storage sealed bag. And so, that's what I used for that for daycare while she was here. Um, also, another great thing I felt like I invested in was this baby camera. And I have it pointing towards the bed so that I could tell if she was up in the middle of the night or if I heard a noise, could check on her without actually physically walking in the room and maybe causing more of a problem. Um, also, another great thing I invested in was the this, uh, I think it's Baby Frida, something to that effect. Yeah, Frida brand. Um, it's a humidifier that you can put essential oils in. And it also has a nightlight function. So let me see if I can show you that real quick. What that looks like. Um, this was very helpful. Not only the relaxing scent of the essential oils, but just that extra little nightlight provision. So it would serve as a nightlight as well. And it will automatically change colors for you. Um, or you can hold it down and set and it will save a specific color if the child likes a specific color best. Um, and then you just adjust the flow of the, the steam for the essential oils and humidifier by this knob. Here. So. And then you just hold down the light button to turn it off. And that's that. Uh, moving on to the bathroom portion um luckily i have my child's room connects straight into my extra bathroom and um it's just a pretty standard um you know sink space there um i also have this cute little mini mouse um kids toothbrush holder uh that i have you know kids flavored um toothpaste in and um, this is actually just a toothbrush that when my nephew comes over, he uses. And it also comes with this cute little rinse cup. Now, I would suggest anything like that that you're using ch from child to child um, in foster care. Maybe getting the disposable cups to use um, just so you're not passing germs or potentially any type of disease or any type of that thing that could be transferred through bodily fluids onto another child. Um, and also, if you have a concern like that, that... Maybe the child has some kind of um, condition or disease that could be spread through bodily fluids. You definitely want to consult with like pediatricians or whatnot on if certain items should be reused between placements. And then in the bathroom, there um, is one of the biggest things I wanted to show you was in the tub area. So this rack here has been a lifesaver um i got it online at target as well um it's just like a, a pressure extension rod that connects to your ceiling and then to the base of the tub or that like mine has an edge a lip there that it connects to and that way you can store products up high that maybe you don't want them to get into but maybe if you're also using this as a guest bathroom when people are over that they could still shower and have adult products up top um, and then your kid-friendly products at the bottom. Um, and this little rinse bucket here, I also really found valuable. Someone, you know, gifted it to me off my registry. Um, just to rinse out here when you're shampooing or get all those last-minute suds off before you get out. And then the other 
awesome things I invested in in this bathroom space were these awesome toy nets. Um, as you can see, this one's completely um, air breathable and it's so that toys can dry out. And this one also has a net so that they have a place to drain and dry without getting molded or soiled or anything like that. Um, I have some kid friendly wash rags and towels hanging up. This is actually a hooded Elsa towel from um, Frozen. Um, and then one other thing too I would recommend having on hand is this super cholesterol. So you got to understand some of these kids come from backgrounds in housing um, that are not ideal and we battled the last battle <laughs> and outside of the normal just lice treatments you can buy over the counter. Um, I had a friend that recommended that super cholesterol and it works wonders for lice. Um, I still use the treatment and you do it once and then you're supposed to do it again in like five to seven days but in between those days I use the cholesterol um, to kill any of the eggs because um, high content, high fat content oils actually smother the lice and don't allow them to live. So very appreciated advice and keep it on hand at all times now. Um, so that is basically the gist of the room. Um, one thing to I'll just point out these pictures on the wall. Um, so I had a really good friend that helped me do a photo shoot as I was getting ready. Um, you can tell my shirts there, there says I'm expecting someone wonderful. And I just had some several very cute shots done. Um, the middle one says whatever shoe fits with multiple different shoes. Um, and then this just says from fur mom to foster mom. I had my cute little dogs involved in it. And they had shirts that say big brother and big sister on. Um, and I very much enjoyed that. Um, it's something that I always dreamed of when... I would have my own child is doing like an expecting photo shoot and so when I decided to pursue this route of fostering and not knowing since I'm already 30th I'll have the chance to have a biological child I wanted to do my own version of an expecting photo shoot and got all of these wonderful wonderful um, photos you see on the wall um, as a result and just had a really great time with it. So I encourage you, if you're interested in doing something like that, don't be ashamed, embarrassed, or feel like it's silly. Because you should enjoy every moment of becoming a mom in this way as well. Just as if you were expecting one from your own womb. Because um, there's very much a lot that is very similar. You are becoming a first time mom and you are expecting for the first time. So enjoy it. And celebrate it and do things to prepare yourself and enjoy it um one of the other major things I did before taking on the first placement like I went and got my hair dyed and fixed and all that um just things that I saw they people recommended that first time moms do before they give birth I tried to implement a lot of that for myself as I was getting ready for the process because um again I don't know if I'll ever have that natural process to kind of celebrate those moments or do those things for myself so I, I took advantage of a lot of those opportunities and put them into the same experience um, at, in becoming a foster parent so just encourage you to enjoy every moment of it and celebrate it and um, know that you are loved and appreciated and you're going to make a difference in so many of these kids lives and they will never forget you for it so you deserve to celebrate yourself and the absolutely wonderful gracious sacrifice you're making to do this so please let me know if you have any questions concerns comments want to know any more about any of the products i showed you or any of the things i invested in um i think i forgot to mention when i was showing you the little floor mat um that i actually just picked up at walmart the little foam floor mat um and i want to say it was like less than 20 dollars. so and i've also seen them at big lots things like that so those are pretty accessible if you want one for your floor to kind of protect your carpet and um, even at one point I had it in my living room because I had the table out there for her to eat out there um, so it's very easy to disassemble and assemble and move wherever you need it to be so let me know if 
again if you have any questions and if there's anything else you would like to see more of and I will try to post again in August. Thanks guys for watching and stay tuned and if you're joining this road of becoming a foster parent again enjoy and thank you and know that you are doing something very worthwhile and very rewarding. Keep your head up. Bye.